<laughs> now on our list, are, are there any other places potentially? Okay, Mercury and eh, Moon, eh, Mars, kind of, but. Well, the one thing that was left was the asteroids. Yeah. Now, the one benefit the asteroids have of everything else is an economic incentive. Yes. So, I mean, the asteroids are very much low mass compared to the planet, but it's actually split around the total surface area of the asteroids is more than the surface area of the Earth. Yep. And that, a lot of minerals are exposed there. We get, as we talk about in the space section, of course, there are, and in the asteroids, there are minerals, asteroids made purely of nickel and iron. That's right. Then if you could just bring them to Earth and sell them at market rate, you could buy the world many exactly. times over. So there's a lot of money to be made by mining the asteroids. Yep. So this is, in most colonies have to have some reason to exist. And that reason maybe we don't want to be back in the mother country, take me somewhere else, I don't care where. Yep. But a, a stronger motive is we can make money there. That's right. So you know, Australia wasn't, was colonized by you know, the wool it could sell and mostly by the gold rushes. Yeah. And they discovered gold, suddenly they made a lot of money and settlers flooded in. Until that happened, the population was very small of the settlements. So if you want a large settlement, where you're going to have to pay for all the rockets to get there and to encourage people to go there, mining would be a thing to do it. And the asteroids are the best place for that. They've got far more minerals, far more exposed. And also, in many ways, if you want to do industry, the asteroid belt is the right place to do it. Okay. It's probably much easier to do industry in zero gravity than on Earth. That's right. No atmosphere to worry about polluting. Yep. Um, solar power is, I mean, it's fainter out in the asteroid belt, but it's predictable. Exactly. You don't have clouds coming going at night time. You can just build a solar panel and you get that power day in, day out, constantly. Some of those issues of whether there's other life on there that we probably have to deal with or worry about or interfere, not really going to happen either. Yeah, so these are all economic benefits which is why you might expect to have space mining. The drawback is, I mean, are you going to be living in... On a There's nothing to rock? really live, right? Yeah, but it might be possible to actually build habitats. Okay, so you're essentially saying, all right, well, we can't necessarily live off the land, like on the moon. Well, we can live off the land, because all the elements we want are there. In the outer okay. part of the there's water in yep. plenty, uh, and there's lots of minerals. So in terms of living off the land, everything we need, energy, water, air and so on is all there for the asking. That's not a problem. Okay. The problem is it's pretty unpleasant. You'd be in zero gravity, which as you're talking about in the space course is going to do horrible things to the human body. There's no atmosphere either. There's no pressure. And you want to live in a box on, a, on an asteroid for large periods of time. Yeah. So you're really going to have to essentially not terraform a planet, but create something. But maybe that's actually going to be easier than terraforming Mars. Maybe place what we should be doing is not looking for a suitable planet because there is no suitable planet really suitable planet in the solar system yep mars is the best and it's not very good so we... maybe we could build somewhere much nicer in the asteroid belt where there's an economic incentive okay so the idea is that you can find something and you know instead of uh uh trying to buy a new home and refurbish it you just build a new home that you want yep so the first thing you're going to want is gravity. Yeah. So enough gravity, it doesn't have to be full Earth gravity, but enough that you're not going to be losing your bones. And... Exactly. You need at least, you know, a third what we expect on Mars to explore in the space course. Yeah. So, so people have looked into how you might do this. And one idea is to have ring space stations like this. Okay. And so and... this is creating what we hear artificial gravity. So what yeah, is... So the whole thing is spinning. Yep. So a centrifugal force gives an artificial gravity inside the spinning disk. So you're not creating gravity, you're just mimicking the force of gravity through other means. But that will do everything we need for our bodies. Yep. Um, now in principle we could spin this, this room and give us artificial gravity if you spin it fast enough. That's right. The trouble is NASA did a whole bunch of experiments where they looked at if you're spinning too fast you are going to be nauseous the whole time. And basically they discovered if you're spinning at more than about one revolution per second most people will be in a perpetual state of nausea. Yeah. So to get a decent gravity while still not spinning at more than one revolution per minute, you'd want to be fairly big. Yes. Um, so it could just be you put a space craft and a big rope and a counterweight at the other side and orbit around, and some mission concepts have this. But what you could do is a ring like this. So here we've got an idea of what it might be like inside one of these rings. So there's kind of like this big ringed... Like a donut. Donut, yeah, hotel. And you're living, living on the outside edge of the tire, like, or a bicycle tire or something yeah, like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah with glass on the inside with some mirrors to reflect some sunlight in, so you've got what seems like daylight. Yep. And it could be rather nice. You can have the air in there. This can be where you uh, live, your houses, and then you go out in your spacesuit to help run the asteroid mines. And so this is big enough that you're not 
spinning, 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 and things come out of you, let's say, um, but you're actually spinning enough to create enough of that artificial gravity that mimics yeah. what the human body needs. So this sort of science, it would just feel like gravity, a bit lighter than the Earth, but that yeah. might be quite nice, jumping around a bit. Everyone's a little bit taller, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, stronger. Of course, this is a very big structure to build. Yes but no bigger than many structures that we build routinely on Earth. Yeah. And you've got unlimited energy and unlimited mineral resources in the asteroid belt to build it from. Yep. And, and, to, and to be fair, if you're going to have to build these things on the Moon and Mars, you're equivalently going to have to build very large support structures in place as well. You're not going to be able to ship this from the Earth. You're going to build it in situ. Yep. So you're looking at a sending out factories and the first generation, the pioneers here, are going to be living in pretty unfortunate in boxes. But once they've built something like this, it's going to be quite nice. Yeah. I've even looked into larger possibilities. Um, you could have this type of sphere, it's called a Bernal sphere, and inside this it would look something like this. Uh, again, you get light coming in from mirrors and you could make it quite nice. Uh, of course, economic incentives are, might mean it ends up with skyscrapers all over the inside. Yeah. But it would be no worse than living in many cities in the world, I think. Yeah. All right. And maybe people do a nicer job and make something more lush and green like this. Even bigger, you could have huge, great cylinders rather than spheres. Okay. Um, and uh, build, uh, these could be enormous. Again, we've got unlimited resources in the asteroid belt. Presumably, you'd work up to it. You build the small ones first, and the people living there would build the bigger ones. Yeah, this is the idea: is that, you know, if you're going to get to this, you really have to build a city, and you know, every city evolves over tens to hundreds of years, in some cases, thousands of years. So this is a very long-term vision of what it may be. Probably still shorter than terraforming Mars. Yeah. And if you dismantle the entire asteroid belt and turn it into things like this, there's enough material there to produce enough space stations to have a total surface area 100 times out of the Earth. So if you want to not just move a population, but expand the human race, possible? Possible. I, mean, I, I would say my personal take is if we're going to be looking at humans living in space in large numbers, this is a better bet than any of the planets. So essentially, instead of trying to retrofit what we need into a planet, we just build what we need. Build what we want in a good place economically. Um, and we can have whatever. We can have different climates, different ones, move between them. And so, I mean, if a thousand years from now, most of the world's population lives in space, I think this is where they're going to be living. OK. But again, this is a, a thousand year plan, not a 10 year plan. Not 10, but I mean, it's, it's uh, probably perfectly feasible in 20 to 30 years. Okay. At and least the small initial That's right. Ones. And I think, and, and you know, as we explore this a bit more in the space course, as the technology starts to catch up and develop and we have to do these things naturally, we will start to see these ideas, as you said, the initial ones, not be as far off as one may seem.